Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. This is a continuation of a video that I just started, um, that I just posted. If you go to the previous video first, this is part two on the changes in the Arctic and the ramifications, what's happening now and the ramifications to what's gonna happen in the future. So if you Google Earth Null School, and you just click on Earth, uh, the air, and 10 hexapascals, which is extremely high up in the atmosphere, click on Earth again to close it, then what you see is a polar vortex over the Arctic. And if you zero in, it's actually completely centered right now around Franz Josef um, Archipelago, which is part of Russia. This is um, Novaya Zemla. Um, Z um, Savania, Savania Zemla. Um, this is the uh, Iceland here. This is um, the uh, Svalbard Islands here, Greenland here, just to give you the orientation. So this polar vortex is completely centered over, over um, this archipelago in Russia. And so it's a complete circle here. Before, earlier on in the year, this was split, and it led to a very strong cold blob, if you like, over Asia, a persistent cold region over Asia, very warm temperatures in North America, and then the, the split vortex representing the warm ocean uh, cold continents brought very cold air to sit over North America, which is what we have now. So just to, um, for people that didn't watch the first video, if you go to 250 millibar, then you can see and click on Earth again, you can see how the jet streams are very um, fractured and wavy and going all over the place, very chaotic. And this trough here is the cold air over North America. And we have some ridges here that are coming up into the Arctic bringing much warmer than normal temperatures there. So the Arctic is, has been extremely warm. So as a result, the sea ice extent is much, much lower than it's ever been. Um, this is data uh, from the satellite era, uh, basically 81 to 2010, the average, two standard deviations about that. This is the, the, the record minimum for sea ice in September year in 2012, the dashed line. And this is um, what we're getting this year. So this is off the charts, um, continuing on. The sea ice is thin. Remember extent is you can have 15% of the area of the ocean covered with ice. The rest is open water. It's included in this image, in this particular data as extent. So it's much lower than normal. Now, if we advance, um, the Antarctica is similar. So let me go one more and come back here. So this is the Antarctic sea ice extent. Two years ago, 2014, 2015 win uh, winter, um, actually going into summer. Um, so this is winter going into summer because it's reversed in the Southern hemisphere. This was, we had record amounts of ice and the winds, the, the, the southern annular mode, the polar vortex was very strong and because of the Coriolis force deflection to the left in the southern hemisphere, it pushed the ice away from the surface. Also with a lot of melt, the water is fresh water which freezes at close to zero Celsius instead of seawater which freezes at minus 1.8. So it's easier to freeze the ice. Um, and we had that condition and this is part of weather weirding or global, wet, global climate change weirding, you know, you can get these massive gyrations. We're going through abrupt climate change. We went from a stable state, we're going through an abrupt change to a much warmer planet. And while we're going through this state, there's all kinds of gyrations that are occurring. Um, so this year, the sea ice in Antarctica is also setting record lows um, here. And when you add the two together, um, it's basically, it's mind boggling. It's five or six standard, it was five or six standard deviations off the charts. So if you look at the spatial pattern, 
Um, this is all the ice that is missing right now from, from the norm, the medium, and this is what it is for um, Antarctica. So the ice is going much faster. We're missing these vast areas of ice. So let's have a look um, at, you know, why is this happening? Well, this is from the Danish Meteorological Institute. This is 2016. This is the day of the year, 0 to 365, which we're almost at. And you can see this is, we've had this a number of years. You know, if you go back and click on previous years, if I can get my mouse up there. You know, this is 2015, 2014, 2013, and 2012. Is that 2012? Yes. 2012. So this is where there was a record sea ice minimum before, but the ice formed, um, you know, much quicker. But, you know, on this side of the plot, you know, if we go back to 2016, you know, we had this huge spike of temperatures. We were, the, this whole region, um, this is north of the 80th parallel as a function of the day of year. So the temperature here was much, much higher, almost 20, over 20 degrees Celsius warmer than what it should have been. This is, these were temperatures in October and November, uh, mostly November, that were basically summer temperatures in the Arctic, you know, close to summer temperatures in the Arctic. And then it came back down and it spiked up, you know, it's still a huge gap. So this is why the ice is not forming properly this year. And of course that has global ramifications. Okay, so now we'll look and if you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, and then you, um, you can select all of these images. So what we have here is, this is showing, this is the, if I move the screen up a little bit, this is the Arctic ice thickness um, today, tw December 30th, what it looks like. And this is, the units here are in meters of ice. Okay, so the only thick ice is squished up against the Canadian archipelago. This ice essentially vanished in the summer, allowing the ice to squeeze out of the, um, of the basin, the Arctic Ocean basin, to squeeze out through the Canadian archipelago islands, which we hadn't seen that phenomena occurring before this past melt year. And unfortunately, we're still seeing lots of export of thick sea ice. Even here we are in the you know, middle of winter now, we just passed the, the winter solstice, December 21st, 22nd, shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, and now um, we're still getting export of thick ice, um, which, is, which is, so the ice is being hit by that, it's being hit by warm water on both sides, it's being hit by very warm Arctic temperatures, it's not going to be around for, for much longer. Um, so the general circulation of the winds is you have a gyre here and you have a drift here. And I'll talk about those more in a minute. But first of all, let's look at the ice drift and speed. Um, and you can play movies and look at the last 30 days, etc. You can just click on this image on Arctic sea ice graph as you scroll down, lots of real time, you know, day before data. And you can see the movement of the ice this way and coming down here. And this is speeds of 30 centimeters a second and higher movement. So we're getting loads of export. And once this goes into the open ocean, of course it melts off. So the ice is under severe attack. Now, one thing that is interesting is, so look at this motion. This way, the Beaufort Gyre transpolar drift, this is how things are set up right now. So. We have the Beaufort gyre here, and we have the transpolar drift. So why do we get the wind patterns like this normally in the Arctic? Is because normally this is, uh, you know, if you look at the, uh, the way the wind cells are, look at the Google Hadley cell, feral cell, polar cell, look at the way that the, you know, air rises, is hot, hottest at the equator, rises, creates a low pressure area there, goes up to 30 degrees, descends, creates a high pressure there, which is where the deserts are. That's the Hadley cell, and then you get the feral cell geared, and then you get the polar cell, so you get a high up here in the, over the Arctic Ocean. And because it's a high here, 
As air moves out, it deflects to the right because of the Coriolis force in the Northern Hemisphere. It sets up this gyre, which then sets up this transpolar drift, um, which then exports more ice here. Now, what happens when we have a blue ocean event, you know, be it next summer for the first time, be it before 2020 in a few years? I mean, things are always happening much faster than expected. Um, I hate that phrase because things are happening as expected to, to me and to a number of other people. But the media is always saying faster than expected. They're talking about the scientific consensus view, you know, the mainstream uh, view, the IPCC view, which is obviously always behind the eight ball. So this is how it's set up now. Now, what happens when we have an ice-free Arctic and we have, so we have cold continents in the winter and we have a warm ocean. It arises over the ocean. It creates a low pressure area here. We'll get a low pressure area instead of a high. Air will then move into the low pressure area. So the Beaufort gyre will actually reverse direction. And what that will do is create a transpolar drift up this way, which will draw tremendous amounts of warm water up through between Svalbard and Greenland and create, um, it'll quickly lead to an ice-free ocean year round, I believe. Um, I think, you know, the first year we lose sea ice, all sea ice in the Arctic, first blue ocean event, say it happens in 2020, um, the, the ocean would be clear of ice for a month, you know, a few weeks or so, up to a month, and then within a couple of years, it wouldn't just be September, there was no ice at all in the Arctic Ocean. It would be August, September, October, and within less than a decade, uh, no ice year round. We'll have gone through the abrupt climate transition, we'll be in a much warmer world. And if that transition is over three, three and a half degrees, most people don't really see uh, many countries, many economies um, surviving this type of of uh, rapid transition. Certainly the flora and fauna on the earth is devastated. So are we just gonna sit idly by and let you know the most powerful country in the world reject the science of climate change and let this happen? It's, it's kind of lunacy. Um, okay, so this is what we see here. Now, what I'm gonna be talking about next is a report just came out called the um, it's called the Arctic Report Card, if you like. Just Google Arctic Report Card, um, and this is the, um, what you get, and it just came out in December um, of 2016, and I'm going to have another video, I guess a part three, if you like, um, on, the, on this particular report. So... Please stay tuned. Um, I'm just going to set up for filming now. So just as a reminder, um, my website is paulbeckwith.net. I have well over 100 videos over the last number of years explaining all of this stuff. There, there's nothing really that I have changed in what I've been saying over the last few years. This is I've been watching these trends carefully, uh, letting the public or people that watch my videos all about it, and I will continue to do so on a regular basis. But I really would appreciate, uh, you know, your support. Any, you know, $5, $10, $20, anything that you can spare. And it is in Canadian dollars. I probably made a mistake in having it in Canadian dollars, but it's, you know, there are links to the PayPal site on my website. So 20 bucks, you know, Canadian, that only costs you about, divide by 1.4, you know, that's what it is in US. It's only, what, about 15 bucks US or something. Um, so I'll, I'll stop here. Please have a look at my website and posts, etc. And please uh, share and tweet this video uh, to as many people as possible. Thank you, appreciate your attention.